Eclipse and NetBeans tonight? Let me just uh, let me just see hands here. Uh, who here has installed Eclipse on their desktop before? Pretty much everyone. Okay. So my first thing was to download and install. Uh, it's installed right now. My plan was to uninstall it, download it, and reinstall it to show you how you pretty much all know how. Uh, Java FX is meant to replace Swing for the creation of graphical interfaces. Uh, Java Swing it creates uh, rich clients. Uh, it's to be replaced by Java FX. Has support for uh, HTML, CSS. Java F FX also creates rich clients. Uh, if you're in the software business, you know it's important to have rich clients. Uh, it'll be replacing Swing and become part of the JDK. Uh, makes web clients as well as the desktop. Uh, there's also a drag and drop scene builder that's, uh, uh, that's supported by it. Uh, there's also something called FXML, uh, which is uh, basically a tool to build uh, Java FX GUIs with XML and also has support for HTML, CSS. And so tonight's presentation, I'm just gonna be looking at Java Swing, Java FX. Uh, creating uh, some graphical interfaces, basic animation, Eclipse and NetBeans, and uh, showing how they can work uh, separate or uh, uh, interoperably. Right, so we're gonna start off with a basic, uh, basic swing GUI. It's either 1.7 or 1.8. Okay, that probably is. I, I think I'm on 1.8 here. How many people here have already used Java FX? And how many people have used Swing? One, two, three, four, five. About uh, 40%. Okay. Since everyone's installed the uh, Eclipse, you presumably also worked with enough to see what I'm doing here.
just out of uh, just out of curiosity, what's everyone's uh, what's everyone's favorite layout manager here? I guess who's used Swing? Great Bay. Great Bay. Well, since you're the grid bag master, I'm not going to encroach on your territory it's here. It's been years. <laughs> Actually, let's just... Uh, Any questions on what I've done so far? Uh, a lot of questions for those who haven't done swing yet. You see what this is basically composed of? Uh, J-frame is the top level part of the swing component. And generally you put uh, panels underneath that. And then within the panels you can put the individual components. Right now, we're just using buttons. You can have checkboxes, radio boxes, etc. This might. So a grid layout here, uh, it's one, one of the most useful layouts as far as swing goes, uh, basically divides things into equally sized boxes. And right now, it's just a one by two because there's two buttons here. They're very large at this point. different kind of layout. It divides things into north, south, east, and west, and then has a big uh, center region. I gave the top part the big center region. That's why these buttons are so small. They just have a little, little southern part right here. because I didn't put a space here. Width and height. And I think uh, what I'm doing is I'm, I'm giving the buttons a size. Uh, and most importantly, I'm giving it a height of 100 pixels. So it'll be a little bit larger here. So uh, for those of you familiar or not familiar with Swing, uh, let's suppose I just want to, I want to print out one and two when we click on the buttons. So I'll, I'll put it to the audience. How do, we, how do we go ahead and do that? Yeah. Yeah, need an action, an action listener.
running into trouble because I've done everything inside of main and some of this stuff relies on being, being instances. So what I'm gonna do here is pull this out of the main method. Can you read the error that's here? <coughs> method action method add action listener in the type uh, abstract button is not applicable for the argument. So basic GUI. And so what we need to do is we need to uh, we need to change this class so that uh, it can accept actions. request for anything else you want to see happen? Can you press the buttons? Yeah. Yeah, sorry, say, say that again. Yeah, uh, that, that, that's a good question. And the reason that happens is because I'm using this, uh, this grid layout here. So this, this grid layout that I'm using, what that does is it ba basically, it breaks it up into equally sized rectangles. And so we have two of them. So if one expands, the rule is you, you can't have them you know, of different heights if they're next to each other. They have to be at the same height. So by increasing the size of one, the other one increased as well. And so, yeah, I, I could do that to both of them, but it turns out to suffice just to do that with one of them. So what we have now is we have a, we're, we're printing something out basically any time that a button's pushed. Uh, any ideas how we might be able to uh, distinguish as far as which button is being pushed? Not unless in the class. Yeah? Yeah. For, for uh, action. So. Yeah? Yeah, we could do that too. I, I, I don't like those, so. <laughs> but that, that, that's actually a very good idea. I just happen not to like them. Uh, any other ideas? Yeah. Okay. What's on the action event? Does it have an identity of the button in there somewhere? So it happens that uh, this uh, get source here will give you basically the uh, the source of the action. Uh, you see why we ha we're having the errors we are? So here, they're just, they, only, they only exist with inside this, uh, inside this function here. So we, what we really need here. What we need our 
instance variables. Of course, if I leave this here, it's going to create another variable of the same name. So we don't want that. Let's give ourselves a little bit more space here. Any other questions on the, the GUI I just made? It's uh, just made up of a few components, a frame, two panels. One of the panels doesn't really do anything. The other panel has the two buttons in it. So they have the top and bottom pane, and two buttons. It looks like we're going to uh, yeah, it looks like we're going to go ahead and just make a basic, uh, uh, basic FX GUI next. You have a question? There's also a, a book you recommended to me with more, more in-depth things. Right now, I'm just looking at, uh, yeah, uh, basically, you can look on the internet, Google the first thing, and find a decent tutorial out there. Just to get yourself started. And so, this here is an example of a, of a Java FX GUI. And um, all this code here, I could copy it and paste it into Eclipse to get it working. Um, but it's also what's uh, created as the initial hello world uh, by NetBeans. So let's go ahead and do this. See, we have a couple of errors when we're doing this, we're trying to create our first uh, Java FX application uh, with Eclipse. And it's, a, it's actually a little bit easier when we, we're going to do it in NetBeans with NetBeans in a minute. And so the reason we're having uh, these difficulties is because if we look at this here, um, well, we, we just don't have the FX libraries here. And so we just need to get those into our project properties. cheating, I already navigated there, so let's start again. So this comes C, program files, Java, JDK, and uh, something like a JRE, Live, extensions, and uh, JFX RT. At some point, I'll find out what the RT stands for, but I'm pretty sure JFX is Java FX. Okay. So we now have a whole lot less errors uh, because we, uh, we got those libraries in. Um, so if we, if we take a look at this, um, top level for uh, swing was the J frame, and then there's a J panel underneath that. Um, for FX, 
our uh, top level is our stage, and then we'll generally have a uh, uh, generally have a scene that's underneath that. Is what it's called. And so here it's just called button instead of J button. Uh, that, uh, set text is uh, you can use that same uh, is is the name of the same function when you're working with J buttons. And uh, here they have a. Uh, uh, something called set on action. Do event handler and handle. Back to five. Yeah, I'll go ahead and get rid of these. Uh, so this is one way to do it is that you can have the, the class that you're working with implements an interface and then you refer the uh, action back to that interface and then it, it knows what to do from that. You can also just uh, code this this little hunk of stuff in here, but the uh, the swing equivalent. So this little hunk, I, I think this, this is what you wanted to do before. Uh, this little hunk here, if we run this one, it will just give us the one. And so the equivalent of this over here, add action listener, new action listener, action performed, JavaFX is set on action, event handler, and then handle. So they pretty much look about the same, but they change the words up a little bit for uh, whatever, whatever reasons those may be. Okay. And if we run, so we, we take a look at this, um, this here, you see there's a stage, that's like the J-frame, you give it a, a title, um, you made a button, just one button here, gave it an event, and uh, and there's also this uh, stack pane, which is the root, and you add things to the pane. And uh, you make the uh, scene out of the root, and the, the scene goes into the stage. So it's all uh, put one thing inside another thing, just like, uh, uh, just like swings. You just have to know which, which thing goes in which. Questions on this stuff? Yeah. So, yes. So um, the way that happens, it extends uh, uh, this FX object application, and um, they use this uh, uh, this launch method, and then the launch uh, that, that requires the uh, this start method to be. So if no, if no other questions, any requests to make more interesting colors or anything like that? Yeah. So instead of it having having print out in the um, in the app in the tool, how about mm -hmm. if it the hello world comes out as they press the button so they can see it? Because otherwise they're not when you when you actually mm -hmm. have the um, the button show up, you have to it doesn't it doesn't pop up on the screen. Or in front of the screen, it, it pops up below in the in the, uh, in the like maybe a, a yeah dialogue like a dialogue or yeah. another modal identifier. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. I know how to uh, I know how to do that in Swing. Let's see if uh, we can <laughs> figure that out in the FX really quick. Hey, it's called modal identifier in Swing, right? Option A. Was there your question to add the output? Somehow into the yes. box. Yes. Yeah, in the box. Yeah, in the I, stage. I think I can probably figure that out for swing, but I've never messed with, uh, with FX. 
stacks. So I'd be, I'd be doing one myself. I would want to stack all the plugs or something. Yeah. So I guess a little chunk of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> right. Any other requests for the, the interface here? Is that, for, is that action event at the same time as source availability? So this, uh, this action event here. Uh, What happens when you uh, change your code while the application's running? Alright. So now we do this. And the button is the source. And so, of course, in this case, because we use the uh, inner class here, um, we can make multiple buttons and uh, we'd already know what the source was because we're, you know, we're, we're making the inner class specific to the uh, specific to the button. But if we get, did this a different way, um, presumably you can have the uh, main class be an event handler as well, and then uh, and then you you just use the get source to determine which was the uh, the button you were talking about, which is the button that came from. Okay. Any, anything else here? Yes. Yes. Um, actually, I, I hadn't. It, it is, and that would have been something I should have made a, a good demonstration of. Let me. I think there was a. Suspiciously like order layout. Box. That, uh, which box in the V box? So um, I don't remember exactly which one, but one of them had the uh, uh, horizontal and uh, vertical uh, alignments. Yeah, I think so. They, they they didn't always they didn't always work that well. And so it the hope is that. Uh, Uh, for Java FX, uh, I'm still fairly new to this, uh, so I, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna say either way. But uh, uh, in, in one of the things I was looking at, they just used a, a grid pane before, uh, just to uh, basically space things out as rectangles in a similar way. And so um, the, the the grid layout is something I like to use in Swing, and so I expect to be uh, using grid pane with the, with the FX. If we want, we can take a look at this. 
this might this might not be enough. And then they have, and of course in, in swim there's a flow layout as well. It looks like a, they might have they, they got a couple a couple new ones here, but then that uh, so some of the old ones that. Uh, so it sort of come back in hopefully a, a little better format. Okay. Uh, other questions about this? All right. Uh, I'll go ahead. Uh, I'll show you the uh, basically the, the NetBeans version of this. Yeah, the nice thing, uh, NetBeans, um, and there, there's probably a way to do this in Eclipse with the right plugin, but. Uh, NetBeans already has a, a JavaFX project you can create, and so you don't have to worry about finding the uh, the JFXRT library uh, and having all the errors first. It'll it'll basically work right away for you. So let's Here with the so here, here again with the with NetBeans, you just choose a JavaFX project, JavaFX application. I'm using one point here. Now, how many of you have uh, worked with and installed uh, NetBeans before? So that's interesting. Eclipse is much more uh, popular. Yeah, my, my Swiss. I went to Yuma, uh, University of Maryland, University College, and they recommended that being the set. That's uh -huh. pretty much what I knew that I had dabbled with Eclipse, but that being is what I'm familiar with. And so, as I say, uh, in that means, uh, there's an actual way that you can create uh, swing layouts and just by dragging and dropping buttons and panels and stuff like that. So, right. Uh, I've done that. Yeah. And so here, uh, that whole uh, that hello world that I had to go copy from the, the internet that automatically uh, that automatically all gets generated here by NetBeans uh, when you make your first application. With the Java FX uh, libraries are already there, and uh, there's actually a nice bundle on Oracle's website uh, that has the JDK. The new JDK and NetBeans all in one. You download the whole thing and yeah, got it. Got everything you need to go. And so uh, instead of the F11, you're gonna have an F6 and maybe a shift here. One thing uh, that seemed to be the case when I was working with NetBeans, uh, when you work with Eclipse, you'll be typing and every once in a while Eclipse will sort of freeze up while it's it's catching up, uh, you know, figuring out the imports and the syntax and what parenthesis is going where. I found with uh, with NetBeans, I don't have the freeze up, but it'll 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 be working behind the scenes, so it'll just be out of date. So there'll be I'll fix some errors, and then the errors will still be there. I'll be looking for about uh, five or ten seconds to try to figure out where the errors are. It turned out I just needed to wait for NetBeans to figure out the errors weren't there. Actually, yeah, that was cool. All right, so same thing. Yeah, hello world. And if we want to, we can move into different uh, different events and all those things. And so, yeah. If you want to get started really quick with uh, Java FX, uh, Net NetBeans seems like a good way to go. Just create an FX project and it starts uh, puts puts the stuff out for you.
Right. Uh, any questions about any of this? Okay. Can you, can you make a panel that has the button and then below it it has a, uh, a text box where when you press, press the button the, the response comes in the text box? Let's see. Let me sneak back over to... So instead of adding the uh, button to the uh, to the root, let's see if we can add this V box here. This is a bit impromptu, so hopefully this uh, will do what I expect it to do. I don't know a lot of it. I've seen uh, I, I've seen just a little bit as far as uh, as far as some examples of it. Um, yeah, but I, I mean, it seems to me basically instead of instead of describing something in code, you're doing it with uh, with XML. And so, um, from the perspective of a Java coder, it looks more tedious, but uh, you know, it can be useful because in theory you can uh, you can change the uh, basically the nature of your GUI at runtime by changing the XML and not having to go and change the code if it's a if it's a complex application you're working with. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Right. So we'll make this button two here. would logically follow if one button says hello world and is pressed. And we could also make a, a label like you said this And this is a this is the V box and then, so it seems to be like the flow layout where they chunk one thing on, on top of them. So then there's gonna be better ways to, to lay things out. Prettier ways to lay things out as well. Okay. 
Okay. Um, other other questions on this? Yeah. So I know you said you're you're fairly new to FX. Uh -huh. um, I'm sure you know between swing and FX, each of them had their merits. But is there anything that you can see um, where swing would be more beneficial to use FX over swing, or swing over FX? So I mean the uh, the the FXML is supposed to be a a, a good feature. Um, like I said, that's um, that's for complex applications, but I think that there there might be something like that for a swing. Uh, I'm not sure, um, but uh, it, it's a way if you need to, you can describe a, describe the GUI in, in terms of XML. Um, I I'd say the the main um, sort of pragmatic reason is because swings not being supported, FX is, and the new uh, yeah, they have a one of the things that's supposed to be good about XML is the uh, they have one of the uh, something called a, a scene builder that you can you can make one of these with drag and drop. Um, I haven't really uh, worked with it much, so I'm not doing that tonight. But uh, you know, obviously there were things like that for swing as well. Um, but uh, uh, main reason so far is the pragmatic one. Um, there's uh, the, the the animation is put together um, in different ways. Um, they, they have way. One of the demos, you know, they had ways to, uh, as far as rotating objects, and I mean, I mean, gen generally you can do the same, the same thing with swing. Um, yeah, but ma ma main reason is that uh, uh, FX is the new one; it's getting supported. But I think uh, so. So some of the animation as well, FXML, and also, uh, also as far as being able to create uh, web clients with uh, with Java FX, where swing is generally just a, a desktop. So swing uh, when it comes to multi for API real things deal with plus FX2. Um so far so far with what I, I've done a little bit looked a little bit at uh, the animation with them. Um just what I what I've looked at so far, just they both have a, each has a form of a timer and um, you know, the, the timer goes off and it picks up an event, and so it, it ends up working it, working pretty much the same way. When I mean, you saw the, the event handlers, it's the same basic chunk of code, um, you know, with, 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 with some different names to it. But, um, Do you still have schedule things with the, with the event thread? Um, yes, yeah, so, so, so I mean, you, you still have an event thread going on, and so you, you, you start a timer, and the, the timer events get, uh, will get picked up in, in, in a similar way. Um, uh, you, you, you can have multiple threads going on at the same time. Um, you just have to make sure you're not uh, you're not stopping over each other. Yeah. yeah. Um, so uh, the uh, the graphical interfaces can uh, can work with. Uh, With CSS. Uh, so you can you can actually have a. Uh, so I, I think I think that the way it seems to be working, you can actually have styles where your buttons will show up in a particular way, and uh, your frames will show up in a particular way based on based on styles. So you're actually here. You're defining defining properties of a radio button. Defining properties for a root. And so pro probably one of the uh, one of the most useful things you're going to see there is uh, being able to set how how all uh, components of a particular type are going to are going to set up in a particular way, and you can change the you can change the styles and have that be reflected in all of the components. Based on ID, uh, select individual components based on ID. Uh, I, I assume so. Where do you have the CSS from? 
Sorry? Where do you add that CSS file? Uh, that, let's see. So that, that I actually, I can't tell you right now. <coughs> Um, actually, let's uh, go ahead and we're supposed to break at 7.50, right? 7.50, right. Okay. Whatever. Yeah, let, let's go ahead and take a break. Uh, let me look if I, uh, and see if there's a little bit better of a, an example of CSS I can, I can show you. <laughs>